why he gets so fly What's my pen pack? Welcome back to another video. In today's video, I am going to be showing you guys how to make a thumbnail on a Photoshop Touch on an iOS. If you guys are excited, make sure to leave a like, but let's get right into it. So the first thing you want to do is start up a new, you know, Photoshop file thingamabob. So then what you want to do is you want to think like, what are you going to do? I usually like to start off with my background, so what I normally do is find a background like online or something like that, but for this, I already have one right here, so we're just going to use it. Um, I mean, I most of the time I go into my MCP, like a random MCP world, and take a screenshot and then use it. As you guys can tell, this is my texture pack and stuff like that, but you guys can go online and find them if you want. Now, first thing that you need to think of is, do you want the background to be super light or super dark? because whatever you're gonna make your background, you're gonna make your text the opposite color. So I'm gonna make mine dark, and a good way to do this is just use this uh, effect right here. And I usually like to put it at like 80%, and then I like to go in back again with the, like an HDR effect and put it at like 33. Or sometimes I like to put it at like 56, and then come up into here and change the brightness a little bit, turn the brightness and the contrast up a little bit. Just makes it look really, okay, that's a little bit too bright or dark. And just do stuff like that. And I think that that looks very, very nice for a background, because you can still kind of tell that it's the game, but it's a little bit different. So second thing you want to do is get text. Now, I use a different app called Fonto to get my text. So I will meet you guys right there. Okay guys, once you guys are in Fonto, if you guys are gonna use Fonto, if you guys don't wanna use Fonto, you don't have to, but for this, I'm just gonna put uh, text, just uh, like, I'll put, I'll put text twice, just because, so there we go, and then you pick a font, any font you want. Um, I'm just gonna go with kind of a bland font right now, so we're just gonna go with that one, and I usually like to style it a little bit, like give the spacing a little bit more of a, like a spacing in between. But anyways, then I just like to center it, so I press those two buttons, and then I save it to my camera roll, and it's that easy, guys. So then, I can just go back into my Photoshop right here, click on YT right there, and then when we click photos it should be right there so then when we add it in it's gonna look like this so you want to go get your magic wand tool and turn this up to like 210 and turn contagious off and then just go like this and cut it so there you go guys now you have the text right there so let's just put the text in the center this is gonna kind of be for like a topic video let's say so we'll put that in the center right there so now let's go work on the text you can hide this if you want but I like to keep it there just so you know I know what I'm doing Anyway guys, just for this we're just going to center it but we're going to move it after. So I'm not going to change the color. If you wanted to change the color, all you have to do is take your magic wand tool again, select the whole thing, come up into here, fill, and put like red or something like that. But I'm not going to change the color for this one. So all I'm going to do is take this rectangle tool, select halfway up the, the text, come up in here, go into brightness, and turn the brightness a lot lower. So I'm gonna put this, the contrast back to zero. I'm gonna put this at like 60 or like eh, around 58-ish. It doesn't need to be perfect. So now we got that. Now what I like to do also is, sometimes you can do this effect right here and it kind of makes it look brighter and stuff, but it also kind of messes up a little bit. So I like using this HDR effect that kind of makes it look a little bit more bright and a little bit more vibrant. So then I like to come down here and to make this 3D, so this next step is gonna be 3D. We're gonna come up into here and we're gonna turn, we're, we duplicated the layer, so let's just redo that. So this is the layer right here and you click the little plus at the bottom and you duplicate it. Now at the bottom, what we're gonna do is click brightness and contrast and all that again. So just keep it and press okay. And then you're gonna wanna go one, two, three, four, five, six, about six times. So as you can see, it already has a little bit of a 3D effect. So then the one that you just moved, you wanna duplicate that again, go underneath it, change the brightness again, and then go down. So we can go one, two, three, four, five, six. So as you can see guys, has a little bit of a 3D effect right there, so it looks pretty cool. And then I usually like to do it one more time just for good measure, so we can go one, two, three, four, five, six, and I didn't make it darker, so there we go. So it gradually gets darker, so as you can see, it looks really good. And then I like to combine those uh, like so. And then if I feel like it, I can always just make them like in total darker like so or something like that i think that looks pretty nice and yeah so anyways guys then what we're gonna do is combine both of these so there we go we're good to go and duplicate it one more time i always like to duplicate it in case if i mess up on the text i have a backup right here so you know what i mean anyway let's come over here and add a stroke to it so all you have to do is click the fill and stroke and then 
click stroke. So I mean, we can add any stroke we want. I think I'm gonna go with a, a black one, uh, probably, or I might change it to like a, a blue, uh, but I'm not sure, maybe a dark blue, uh, just cause you know, I'm not sure. But no, we're gonna change it to like a green. No, I'm just I'm just playing guys. You can change to any color you want. I'm probably just gonna stick with black to be honest, just because I feel like it. So we're gonna give it like a nice four four stroke right there. And we can actually make it a little bit more gray if we wanted to, like so, but I'm gonna stick with black. So then what we're gonna do is put that underneath. So as you guys can see, when you put it underneath, it just makes it look a lot better. Now you guys can't see the actual stroke because it's so dark, but that's what the actual stroke looks like. And as you can see, that's what the text looks like. So then what we're gonna do is we're gonna duplicate the layer with the stroke, okay? So now that it's duplicated, what we're gonna do is we're gonna add another stroke. So you don't have to do this if you don't want to, but I kinda like to. So then we can add like any color stroke. We can even add like a pinkish stroke, a blue kind of stroke, um, greenish, uh, any kind of stroke you want. You can do whatever you want. You can make it like that. Um, I don't, I, tech, I usually don't make my strokes are very very big but then we'll just go like that um honestly i kind of want to go with the white stroke just to keep the white and black theme of this whole thing but then what you're going to do is combine both of those and i like to add a glow effect so you go to basic and you got a glow effect and you can do that also works the same if you use a drop shadow except the drop shadow is more of a, a shadow rather but i like to use the glow because you know why not and so then whatever color your outer stroke is, so since mine's white, I need to pick like a dark color. So I'm just going to go with black just to keep, you know, the theme kind of kind of rolling. So uh, we're going to boost up the intensity and put that to about 11-ish, 13, 13, maybe 15. 26 26 is fine right there so that's our text so then when we put that back you can't really see it but it's all right guys so don't worry about it but that's basically what our text looks like so we can kind of put that wherever we want and all that but then what i like to do is add an empty layer so with this empty layer what we're gonna do is grab our rectangle tool that's still selected we're gonna kind of zoom in just a little bit start from that top corner this that this takes a little bit of practice to get it like kind of perfect not perfect but like to get it looking like a rectangle so it's like equal on all sides so we're gonna select that we're in the empty layer we're gonna go into your and fill it and stroke so we're gonna go like this and just create a thick stroke and then click the little move button up here and then move it so it fits the whole thing make sure you get everything and then when you move it it looks like that and then you can obviously rearrange it a little bit like uh, move this part a little bit lower so like it since that side's really skinny but I think it looks fine just like that so then what we, you can do, I usually like doing this with mine, is we can duplicate that layer, but on the top layer, we're going to come into here, go into effects, and click glass. So what the glass does is it basically makes it, the border look a little bit less professional, if you will, and I just think that that adds a lot to it, and then we can kind of combine it. Um, and it is kind of driving me insane that these are not the same length, so we can kind of go like that and make them the same length. So that looks very, very cool, guys. Then what we're gonna do is I usually like to add a gradient. So again, I have I just put in an empty layer. Number one thing you guys gotta realize, your text always has to be the top layer for it to look good. I mean, not necessarily, but sometimes. Now, if you guys wanted to add a render, for example, let's go find let's go find a render really, really quickly. All right, um, I don't wanna use that one. All right, we'll use this one why not so if you want to add a render guys you got to make sure it doesn't cover up too much of the text but you also don't want to put it like straight behind it i mean that looks okay but you know it, it doesn't look that great so if you were to do it you'd put this either on the side like so and like put the text on the right or something like that or put the text a lot lower so like we can keep that right there and then move the text down here like so and then go like that that looks okay too uh because that looks kind of weird you know what i mean so uh but we're not gonna have a render for this but if you guys did that's pretty much what you guys gotta re uh gotta know what to do uh so yeah let's go center that again and then what i want to do is add a gradient so we have this empty layer right here it literally has nothing on it and what we're gonna do is come into here and add a gradient so you can add whatever color gradient you want you can even add one like right there coming from the center which looks pretty cool honestly i think i'm gonna do that for this one i usually don't use this but because i gave it the glow effect uh on like the text how it's dark it does look really cool having that right there so i think we're gonna go with that that looks very very nice and then what i usually like to do sometimes is kind of uncenter this a little bit so go like that and then take this uh duplicate the stroke layer and then just go like this and then turn it so it kind of matches it you know so it looks like it's uh two things uh, and then i like to put that below it and make it a little bit darker just because you can so you can kind of tell that it's behind it you know what i mean you could do that 
uh, like make it darker or you could just come into here and make it a little bit more blurry whichever one suits you I think I will make it a little bit more blurry so then that's basically what it looks like guys so that's how I make my thumbnails I don't know if that's how you guys do them I don't know if you guys if this was a little bit confusing but that's how I make my thumbnails guys that's how I made multiple thumbnails and all that I've really been getting really into graphic design lately so maybe if you guys hit a certain amount of likes if you if okay I'm gonna set the like go kind of big for this but if you guys hit 30 likes on this video I will pick two people in the comment section below and make them a free topic thumbnail if you guys want to if we hit 30 30 is a big goal I don't know if we're gonna hit it um, I'll actually bust it down to 25 how about that 25 likes and i'll give two people a uh, topic thumbnail that kind of looks like this and stuff like that but guys if this i mean there's multiple other things you can do I, I definitely didn't go through everything like you could come into here come into here get a direction blur may add that effect to it that could look very nice you could even just blur it i mean I'm, I, you can go on for days and days and days you could make it a little bit bigger like so or a lot oh oops sorry my bad you could come into here and make it a lot bigger like so or even like a lot bigger like that and then just make it blurry like that or you can like make it less op op the opacity a lot less like that so that could look very cool too if you guys want to i like to kind of keep it simple but anyways guys if you guys enjoyed this tutorial and you want to see more tutorials from your boy panda and if you want to see more photoshop tutorials like uh, special things you know all that good stuff uh, let me know uh, like a banner tutorial and just stuff like that if you guys want to let me know I'm definitely not the best at this but I do try my hardest to make my thumbnails look good so hopefully you guys enjoyed this video if you guys didn't make sure to leave a like and a comment subscribe if you haven't already to stay up to date my videos and to join the panda pack remember guys 25 likes and I will give away two thumbnails for free to anyone in the comment section that comments and as always guys have a safe and enjoyable rest of the day and I'll see you guys in the next video See you guys later.